ConMet preset hub assemblies have been around since 1995. Thanks to a new relationship with SKF, we now have a comprehensive service kit that's available in the field to completely rebuild the preset hub assembly. As a part of that service kit is a comprehensive, technician-friendly work instruction. Initially, the preset was only available in aluminum. It's now available in aluminum and iron for front, drive, straight, and tapered spindle trailer applications. The service kit is going to include the same components, including a hub cap for the steer and the trailer hubs. Basically, all of the service requirements are the same as a manually adjusted wheel end, with a few exceptions that are primarily related to the aluminum product. In the factory, this hub is heated up to 180 to 200 degrees Fahrenheit to install the uh, bearing cups. That's to expand the hub and prevent damage to the bearing race as it's pressed in. It also allows for a greater interference fit when it cools. To remove the race, we like to weld a bead around the face of the race, let that cool, it causes the race to contract and it makes it much more easy to remove the race from the hub itself without damaging the race. To install the new races, we like to see the race is chilled, something as simple, as simple as a deep freezer. We like to see the hub heated to 180 to 200 degrees Fahrenheit. There's several methods to do that. From something as simple as boiling the hub in a pot of hot water, to a steam cleaner, to a high pressure hot water wash system, or an oven. When the hub's expanded at 180 to 200 degrees, with chill races, it requires a lot less force to assemble the uh, components together. When the race is installed, it's very important that it's seated fully against the bearing shoulder in the hub. To check that, we use a thousandth and a half to two thousandths feeler gauge to ensure that it's fully seated. When you're comfortable that both races are seated, we're going to lubricate the bearings and the lubricant that's going to be in the wheel end. Installing the inner bearing first, we're next going to install the seal. We also like to see the ID and the OD of the seal lightly lubricated with a wheel end lubricant. The Scott Seal Plus XL is a hand install seal. Typically, the pressure of the palms of your hands will seat the seal into the hub. At that point, we rotate the hub over using caution to prevent damage to the ABS tone ring. We're going to install the bearing spacer. If it's a tapered bearing spacer, the small end goes out. We install the outer bearing, hold it in place, reaching through the bearing, align the spacer as you slide the hub up onto the spindle. When the hub is installed onto the spindle, keep the outer bearing in place to prevent cocking the seal and causing damage. With a multiple piece spindle nut system, we torque the inner nut to 300 foot pounds. With the lock ring, we have two opportunities to fit the lock ring onto the tab on the spindle nut. If it won't fit, we turn the ring over and try the second position. In the event it doesn't fit, we only want to torque the spindle nut. No back off, contrary to manual adjustment procedures. We want to ensure that we've got 300 foot pounds minimum torque. We put the locking device on. We torque the outer spindle nut to 200 foot pounds. When that torque is achieved, we activate the locking mechanism on the nut system. This system is also compatible with one-piece nut systems such as AxiLock or ProTorque. In the event a one-piece nut system is used, you'll disregard the nut manufacturer's instructions and follow the instructions for the preset hub assembly. In that event, you will torque the nut to 250 foot-pounds and advance the nut as required to engage the locking feature. Install the hub cap or drive axle per the manufacturer's instructions, fill the wheel in with the correct lubricant, and the vehicle is ready to place back into service. And that's it.